Thank you, Roy and Ona. Now I just need to find which computer John is on. John, can you unmute yourself, please? Oh, I might have found you, John. He's not on the very end. I've unmuted one, John. Yes. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can. Morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Uh, it's good to get this chance to, uh, to get a word in edgewise. It's a bit hard normally for me, but uh, now I've got the stage. Um, I'd just like to start by acknowledging our First Peoples. We acknowledge the traditional caretakers of the land in which we live. We acknowledge their deep spiritual connections to this land, pay our respects to their elders past and present, and thank them for the care they have shown the earth over thousands of years. Our call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. The shadows have gone and the day has dawned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The stone has been rolled away and Christ is alive. Hallelujah. Our sorrow is turned to joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, Roy and Ona are going to lead us in, I know that my Redeemer lives. We come to our opening prayer, and um, after each bidding, there's a response which is, Thank you, God of life. Let's pray. God of life, thank you for the night, for those who kept watch through its long hours, for the gift of sleep and the refreshment of dreams, for your faithful presence that keeps us company when we are not aware of you. Thank you, thank God, you God of life. life. God of life, thank you for this new day, for the song of birds, the early morning bustle of city streets and the brightening sky, for this day of all days when we celebrate the risen Christ. Thank, thank you, you God, God of life. God of life, thank you for the message of Easter for the affirmation of your steadfast love, for the presence of the one who overcame death, for the promise of life still to be revealed. Thank, Thank you, you, God of life. 
as we move uh, towards hearing Ona read the scriptures for us, I'd invite you to think of a, of a time when you received a very big surprise. What emotions did you experience in response to that surprise? Was it joy? Was it shock? Or was it disbelief? Here's Ona to read the Bible for us. Uh, the first reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verses 11 to 20. Now, while they were on their way, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and counseled together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, you are to say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this should come to the governor's ears, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. But the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to absorb, observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The second reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. After these things, Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he manifested himself in this way. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said, We'll come with you also. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus therefore said to them, Children, you do not have any fish, do you? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you will find a catch. They cast, therefore, and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. That disciple, therefore, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. And so when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment and threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land but about 100 yards away, dragging the net full of fish. And so when they got out upon the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and bread also. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples ventured to question him, who are you, knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave them, and the fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus was manifested to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Anna. We now 
move into our prayer of confession. And once again, it's a responsive prayer. God of life, creation shouts your presence, but we do not always know where to find you. God of life, your spirit is in all who love and do good, but we do not always recognise you. God of life, your promises give us hope and confidence, but we do not always understand or believe. Hear these words of affirmation. The God of love does not give us over to death, but offers us life. The spirit of Jesus gives us a song of joy to sing. We are witnesses to the life of the risen Christ. Alleluia. Now, Roy and Ona are going to lead us again. In the hymn, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. I'll just uh, thank you, Roy and Ona. I've just got to find David now and unmute David. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, he's unmuted himself. There we go. All right. All right. Look, I want to talk for a couple of minutes about what was going on this day, two thousand years ago. And I want to put us back in that room, that first story room, where the disciples and um, a group of women are huddled together, frightened, in fact, scared, witless. And looking back just two days um, at the most disastrous possible series of events that they could ever imagine, 
because over a period of 10 hours, they saw Jesus arrested, humiliated, beaten up, tortured, defenceless, and then they saw him die. And that all happened in 10 hours. And two days later, there they are in the room and wondering what is going on. So let's go to that room. It's about, um, it's about quarter to six in the morning. It's um, near the beginning of December, so uh, it's dark. And out of the city, a group of women are setting out. They can't get out of the gate until the first uh, rays of the sun come up. But they're on their way to the tomb. We know the names of some of those women. There was, uh, there was a Mary. That's the Mary who's the mother of Thomas. There was Salome, Joanna, and several others. And in the darkness, they are holding in their hands bags of very expensive spices, which they were going to really anoint the body of Jesus and in a way to stop it from premature um, putrefaction. So they're on their way. And one of the party of women is Mary Magdalene. Where well, they make their way to the, to the tomb, they are wondering. In fact, we are told they're wondering suddenly, how are they going to move this stone away? Because they appear not to know that the Romans had put a couple of soldiers there because the Romans had been approached by some of the temple officials to say, look, put some soldiers on that grave because we heard that he said he was going to rise, rise again. So maybe the disciples will want to steal his body and take it away and say, see, he's risen. So the women go there. They... As they arrive, there is an earthquake. The stone at the front of the uh, tomb is moved aside. There is an angel sitting on the stone and the, the Roman soldiers are rendered unconscious. So they go in and discover that the, that the tomb is empty. And while they're there, they are, they are spoken to by these angels and they are terrified. But, and so immediately, Mary Magdalene rushes back, perhaps on her own even, through, the, through the, the early morning light. She goes straight to the upper room. She rushes in and says, Jesus has gone. Someone has stolen his body. And I don't know where it is. She turns and runs back. And with her is Peter and John. They run to find out what is happening. And you must remember that Peter at this stage is carrying with him an enormous burden of guilt. Because two days ago, he had shown great cowardice. He, uh, like all the rest of the disciples, he turned on his heels and ran. But in Peter's case, he denied that he even knew Jesus. So he and John run back to the tomb, probably leaving Mary Magdalene in their wake. She arrives later. And she sees again the empty tomb. And when she backs out of the tomb, she looks around her and there's a man standing there. She thinks it's the gardener. And she goes to him and she says, if you have stolen his body, where is it? And this figure turns to her and says, Mary. She immediately recognises that it's Jesus. She runs towards him. He steps back and says, don't touch me. And he makes this mysterious remark. He says, I have not yet ascended to the Father. She turns on her heels and runs back to the room. In the meantime, the other women who were making their way away from the tomb, 
they encountered Jesus on the track back into the city. And they talk. He says, you can touch me. So they do. They touch him. And they also turn on their heels and run back to the room. So within a short while, Mary Magdalene and the other women are in the room saying to the disciples, we have seen Jesus. And the disciples didn't believe them. In fact, the disciples, the men, and notice that it is the men, the significant, one of the significant aspects of this story is the extraordinary role that women play. Women are the first to, to see him and they're the first to immediately believe it's true. The men can't get their heads around it and actually say to the women that it sounds like a silly story. So by this time, it's probably nine o'clock this Sunday morning, 2,000 years ago. Later that afternoon, about three o'clock, there were a couple of characters walking out of Jerusalem on their way home to a town called Emmaus. And then Emmaus was about seven miles away. So it would take them maybe an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half at, at a reasonable pace to get home. And as they were walking home, they met by a stranger. We know the name of one of these characters. His name is Cleopas. And rumour, or well, tradition has it that the other character was actually Luke, the one who wrote the gospel, because Luke includes this story in great detail. So as they're walking along, this character says, what are you talking about? And they said, are you the only person in Jerusalem that doesn't know what has been happening? He said, what happened? And they said, well, we believe that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah and we've just seen him crucified. He's dead. And we thought that this was the coming of Israel's restoration. And they were desperate. So as they move close to the town, it gets starting to get dark. And they said, where to this character? Would you like to stay with us? He says, yes, I'll come. He goes to their house and they sit down to a meal and during the meal, Jesus breaks the bread and the wine as we are going to and they immediately recognise him and he disappears. They run back to Jerusalem. They probably got back there in about 40 minutes and they go into the room also. They burst in and they say, we have seen Jesus and they tell the story about what happened to them. And even then, many of the disciples were saying, I can't get my head around this. This cannot be true. And as they're talking, Jesus appears in the room and they are terrified. They think he's a ghost. And he says to them, don't be afraid. I'm not a ghost. I have flesh and blood. And he says, touch me. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. And they cannot bring themselves. They are beginning, the new wondrous revelation is beginning to dawn, but still they're saying, how can this be so? And then Jesus says something quite remarkable to them. He says, um, have you got anything to eat? They said, yes, we've got some fish. We caught some fish. Jesus sits down and eats it. What an extraordinary thing. And so on this day, it's now about, I would think about seven o'clock at night. Jesus has appeared one more time that is not recorded in the Gospels, but is actually recorded. In one of Paul's letters, Jesus appeared privately to Peter. And as you know, over the next four and a half weeks, for 40 days, after they'd all gone back to, to Galilee, Jesus met them on and off until he ascended. 
So, what I have been thinking about is this. Isn't it, is it not remarkable that these men who lived with Jesus for three years, they knew he was the Messiah. They'd seen him perform extraordinary, miraculous things. They'd seen him change the weather. They'd seen him produce food out of the air. They'd seen him heal people by just simply touching them or even at a distance. And bit by bit, even though he said to them over and over again, especially in the last few months, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be killed. And I am going to rise again. Even after all that, they could not get their heads around it. But when they did, when finally they knew that it was true, that Jesus had risen from the dead, they were transformed. And I think uh, this is the transforming moment of Christianity. If Jesus hadn't risen from the dead, if they, their doubts had proved to be true, we would not be here, I would not be here talking to you about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But everything depends on that. It means that we can be confident that Jesus is who he says he is. We can also be confident that Jesus can do what he said he would do, which is preserve us and give us eternal life because he rose from the dead and came back and had some fish and moved around. That is what the basis of our confidence is, that Jesus is our saviour. I mean... Thank you, David. And um, now we're, uh, John is going to lead us again. If I can find him. J for John. There he is. Thank you, John. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks, David. I'd like to invite us now to share in this affirmation of our faith. We believe in an Easter God who creates and recreates, who gives abundant life and is with us through all that life may bring. We believe in Christ of the resurrection who appeared to his disciples and became present in a new way to those who follow him. We believe in the spirit foretold by Jesus who came with power and wonders, who gives strength and consolation and empowers us. Amen. Amen. Once again, um, Roy and Ona are going to lead us in singing. Now the green blade rises.
Um, it's now time for our notices, and uh, I'm not sure if Barbara has anything that she'd like to share with us. Uh, before we go to Barbara, as David mentioned, we are going to share in communion this morning. So uh, if you didn't remember to have something uh, to eat and, and to drink as uh, symbols in this um, uh, Eucharist, uh, now might be the chance to go and quickly grab something. So um, can we go to Barbara and see if she's got any, anything to remind us about, Andrew? As far as I know, there are no notices um, because everything's in recession. I'm sorry. Did, did anyone hear me? Yes, uh, uh, yes, we heard you, Barbara. And um, I think that's pretty much right. I might check with John that, uh, like, uh, John held a little little Zoom cup of coffee, cup of tea in the middle of the week last week, just as a bit of a tryout. So, John, are you planning to do that again? Uh, yes, we will do that again on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday? Uh, 10 o'clock. I'll, I'll send out the, um, the meeting ID and, and password in the next couple of days. So that's just another chance to um, use Zoom to see faces and have a chat in a more informal way. And then um, apart from that, uh, it'll be worship next Sunday, um, which will be uh, like, we'll, 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 get in, we'll get into the groove of uh, sending out invites and things like that. Um, my plan from now is f from next Sunday, the same ID and password will be used every Sunday. So um, we don't have to chop and change every, every week. Um, and uh, I just have to set that up properly. <laughs> I, I've seen that it's possible. I haven't checked final details, but we'll do that from next Sunday and that'll make life a little bit easier for us. Um, apart from that, I'm not aware of anything else. Um, the only other uh, bit of news is that um, yeah. in um, people will have seen, uh, who've read the e-news, that uh, Bill Ingold uh, passed away in the last uh, day or so. Um, and I believe that um, David has been asked to conduct the funeral. Uh, of course, that was going to be uh, quite a different experience uh, under the circumstances that we find ourselves at the moment. But... Um, we do pass on our uh, love and thoughts and condolences to um, Bill's family. And, um, and we think two of um, people in our congregation who provided care to Bill in the last few years. And we pray too for David as he prepares to, uh, to lead that funeral. Um, we come now to our um, prayers. And uh, once again, it's responsive and um, the words will be on the screen. God of life, we see resurrection all around us. Butterflies emerging from cocoons, flowers bursting from bare branches, new buildings arising from the rubble of past destruction. Resurrection gives us hope. Thank you. But resurrection can also be difficult and painful. Resurrection means letting go of the old life while still uncertain of what the new life will bring. On this resurrection day, we remember those who are struggling to find resurrection, those trying to escape cocoons of dependence, violence or harmful behaviour. Loving God, may the stone be rolled away, releasing them to the new life. We pray for those whose grief for their lost life
blinds them to the possibility of resurrection. Loving God, may the stone be rolled away, releasing them to new life. We pray for those whose time on earth is nearly done and fear what lies ahead. Loving God, may the stone be rolled away, releasing them to new life. God of life, thank you for resurrection, for Jesus' new life offered to all, for people of faith who spread the good news, for those who roll the stone away, releasing people to new life. May we do our part to roll away the stone. Amen. Uh, this is the point in a normal service where we would take up our offering. And um, we know that um, people are finding various ways to um, keep making their offerings, either through uh, bank transfers or getting their envelopes to us in different ways. And as Andrew has uh, said in the last uh, couple of weeks, it's not just our money that we offer, but we offer our time and our energy and our gifts particularly as we um, support each other through this time of being physically separated. So uh, we do have a prayer of dedication. What can we offer you, God of life, to thank you for all you have done? We open our hearts and lift up our voices in praise as we rejoice in you today. May these gifts that we bring and the lives that we live be witnesses to your love shown in Jesus. Amen. And normally at this time we would share the peace. So uh, if you're uh, in company with um, at least one other person, then I invite you to share the peace with that person. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Mm. And now, if you've got your bread and your wine uh, or juice or whatever ready, uh, let's move into our communion. This is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. In great humility and love, Jesus lived among us. He became one of us. He came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He came not to condemn us, but to save us from our sins. He understands our doubts, our lack of faith, our longing for more love more holiness of life. And even now he accepts us as we are and calls us to be his disciples. Come then to this holy feast. Come to our crucified Saviour and risen Lord. The Master is here and is calling to you. Come and receive the signs of his presence, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. And we come to the great prayer. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. With all we are, we give you glory. Trinity of love, the one and holy God, Sovereign of all time and space. 
We bless you for this wide red land, for its rugged beauty, its changing seasons, for its diverse peoples, and for all that lives upon this fragile earth. You have called us to be the church in this place, to give voice to every creature under heaven. We rejoice with all that you have made as we join the company of heaven in their song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To Adam and Eve, children of dust, you gave the world and its wonders. But we misused your gift of freedom. We reached out rebel hands to be like you. We bless you for your mercy, for you never cease to call our restless hearts until they find their rest in you. Holy God, we offer our thanks and praise. Again and again, you raised up men and women to speak your word, to guide, to challenge and convert. At the last, Father, you sent Jesus Christ, child of your love, God with us. Born as one of us, he lived our life and died our death, offering us both now and forever eternal life with you, through him, in him, and because of him, we affirm the church's faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up to death, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke it and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the meal was ended, he lifted the cup and again, giving you thanks, gave it to his friends and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. Holy God, we offer our thanks and praise. And so in remembrance of all you have done for us, we take this bread and this cup and offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice made worthy by the perfect offering of Christ, our great high priest. By your word and Holy Spirit, bless these gifts that we may truly share Christ's body and blood and become by grace, his body given for the sake of the world. Holy God, we offer our thanks and praise. For through your spirit, the whole earth makes its prayer in size too deep for words, longing for the day of freedom. For in hope and by faith we were saved. Accept our thanks and praise, good Father, through your Son, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, with whom and in whom and by the Spirit who dwells in us, we worship you in joyful song. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. And let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ is the bread of joy who shares food with sinners. Christ is the cup of life who revives the faint-hearted. Let us receive what we are. Let us become what we receive, the body of Christ. I invite you uh, to take 
your bread, uh, to share it with those around you if you are in company, and eat with these words, Christ's body broken for you. Take the cup and drink from it with these words, Christ's life poured out for you. And let us pray together the words on the screen. Blessed be God who calls us together. Praise to God who makes us one people. <coughs> Blessed be God who has forgiven our sin. Praise to God who gives hope and freedom. Blessed be God whose word is proclaimed. Praise to God, who is revealed as lover. Blessed be God, who alone has called us. Therefore we offer all that we are, and all we shall become. Accept, O God, our sacrifice of praise. Accept our thanks for all that we are. Our hands were empty, and you filled them. Amen. I'm going to share with you the words of the blessing and then Ona and Roy will lead us in Yours be the glory. The everlasting love of the God of life surrounds you. The presence of the risen Christ gives you hope. The strength of the Spirit gives you confidence. Go in peace in the power of this God. We go in peace as witnesses to the life and love of God. Alleluia.